Welcome to Group's Content. All right, welcome back to the first uh, week of Group's Content here at Foundry Church. We're glad you're in a group and we hope you're growing and having great discussion. As you lean in tonight, just a quick recap of what we're teaching on uh, this week. We're talking about the God who sees you and, and, and sees you in your context, right? He, you can stop striving to be seen. We're talking about the God who sees the real you. It's not some candy-coated version of you that God just kind of glosses over and says, yeah, that looks good enough. He knows how evil, sinful, and broken you are. He also knows how much he loves you. He sees the real you, and he cares about what matters. So you may hate how you look and how you think and different things. God doesn't. He sees the real you and cares about what matters in you. He formed you. He has purpose for you. And he sees the whole world. Here's the reality. We talked about it uh, in the intro sermon, in the intro teaching. He's omniscient. He, see, he knows all things. God is all-knowing. He's omnipresent. God is everywhere at every moment. Remember Psalm 139, where can I go from your spirit? If I go to the other side of the sea, you're there. If I go to the grave or ascend to the heavens, still you are there. God is omnipresent. God is omnipotent. He's all-powerful. God is not yielding power to anyone. It's his. This is his world. And his power and his purposes will come to pass. He is over all things. He sees it all. God is wiser than us, and he cares for you, and he wants to protect you. But he has purposes for you. And this is where we kind of dig into the the reality that um, we have to deal with our immediate kind of the the immediate gratification, the lack of perspective we have, we are quite often driven by our appetites and our passions. Like one of the most dangerous things in the world is a passionate Christian who doesn't know anything about God. You can do a lot of damage being passionate. That's an immediate kind of perspective. Uh, A discipline like leaning in on this and knowing that when you grow in your faith, you become not just useful to God, but God delights in seeing you understand who he is. It's a relationship. You're not given to your immediate desires. You're given to see things from God's perspective, and God sees the big game. But all these things tell us one thing. You can trust him. And that's what I encourage you to do as you journey with us this year in groups, to trust that God's plans and purposes for you, they're not always easy because he's working out your salvation with fear and trembling and you're being transformed, but they are wonderful. There's a lot of joy and and just life when it comes to following Christ and being remade into his image. You can trust that the work God is doing in your life is a transformative work for the glory of Jesus Christ. I hope you enjoy groups. Hey kids, welcome back to groups. I hope you're off to a great start with school and the year's going well. Um, We're going to dive right in. So here's your first question. I'm going to read first from Psalm 33, uh, verse 13. From heaven the Lord looks down and sees all of mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. We see in Psalm 33 that God sees us. He's looking down on us, not because we're small, but because he cares about us. How does it make you feel knowing that God is watching over you, that he's looking down on you and he's watching over you? So what do you do when your friends or people around you are doing something that you know would kind of break the heart of God that would make him sad or maybe God wouldn't be proud of. How do you change that situation? All right, kids. Thanks for joining us in groups. We hope you have a great week back at school and a good time connecting with your friends after a summer away from groups. Have a wonderful evening and we'll see you soon. All right, let's dive into the questions for the adults now. Um, Here we go. Question number one, which concept is more difficult for you to grasp? The fact that God sees the whole world from beginning to end or that his eyes are specifically on you? Question two, how would you describe the perspective that you typically view life from?
question three, if you believe that God is wiser than you and sees the end from the beginning, how does that affect you right now? Hey, groups, I want to give you an inside look at a couple of things that are coming up that I think you would like to be involved. As the most invested people in this church, we would love to have you involved in this. First one is this. It, I want to extend an invitation to you to a brainstorming meeting, and it's a big ideas meeting for our kids' classrooms down at Foundry Live. We're going to have a time where we can bring people in. It'll be kids and any of you who feel like, oh, man, I would love to be super creative and be a part of this. So. The, uh, the 29th of September, 2 p.m., back in the youth room here, we are going to have a conversation, a brainstorming session where we throw it out. Literally anything. If you're like, I want a roller coaster room. I don't know if we can do that, but come say it. We're not going to say no to anything. We're going to have big ideas on the boards. We're going to get it all up there, and then we're going to work through what seems best for us at the Foundry. If you're creative or if you just have a great idea, come share it. The 29th, 2 p.m. So I want to give you a sneak peek at the upcoming series we're going to be doing after Life to the Full. It's called Short and Sweet, Don't Judge a Book by Its Number. The reason we call it that is we are going to take a look at the shortest books throughout the New Testament. It's a really cool um, series and we're excited about it, but it also sparked some fun creative ideas that uh, maybe you could be a part of uh, helping us do. When we looked at Short and Sweet, we were looking at these books and we kind of as we studied them, we saw some of the parallels or some of the connections we could make to, to children's stories. Uh, not just biblical ones, but children's stories. And we came up with a way that we're going to do this series that is really cool and engaging. But the cool thing about this is, and here's where you come in, we, um, this series will go over the Halloween holiday. And we thought to ourselves, what a cool idea to um, have sets built up and things ready to go uh, here at the church for the series that fit with the, the children's stories. And, um, and invite the kids from our community because there's a huge trick-or-treating on Main Street. What if we invited our kids from the Rooster location by Frank's when they're going up and down to come out to the foundry and we're going to set it up kind of like, um, I, would you say, like a, a st storybook land, so much better than what I was going to call it, um, like a storybook land and have a short and sweet event where they can come out, they can meet the fam meet the church, see the church, but also just be welcomed here. It's for the littlest kids in our community to come out and not be scared by terrifying things. It would be a really fun, and I would say cute, yeah, I'm going with it, cute event. And it would be an opportunity for us as a church to maybe get people who don't attend church to swing through. And it's going to be really intentional. We're not just handing out candy. We're going to use each one of the sets we make for this event. So what I'm asking for is if you're a builder, if you're a tradesperson, and you know how to build things and make it look good, we really want to build some sets for this series. And I would love to have, or if you, maybe you're not a builder and you, you would chop your fingers off, that'd be bad. But you can paint. Maybe you're super artistic. You could come out and help decorate. We need some people to respond to this. We have, um, we're going to have princesses like Cinderella and different people walking around. Don't worry. We're not going to cram you into a Cinderella dress and glass shoes and be like, take care of kids. We have, um, somebody just went, shoot, out in the audience. Um, we have some students. Our youth group is going to be doing that. We just need some people to really help us out with this by making it happen uh, from the, the functional side of getting the sets built and doing things like that. If we can get people to buy into this, we will do it. And this is what the, the announcement's for. Will you join us in this? Will you be part of an evangelistic effort to our community with your time, your treasure, and your talent? Will you help us build some sets, paint them, make it look great so that when kids come here, they're experiencing the grace and goodness of God through some of the stories of their childhood, of their childhood that they're familiar with, and they'll see that our series... The teaching is also somehow linked to it. Maybe get some people saying, hey, let's check that out on a Saturday, a Sunday, a Monday, I don't know, Tuesday. So um, one more thing. Email me. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> so here's the here's what I'm going to have you do. I'm going to have you email somebody about this. Her email address is Erica E R I C A period 
Folkers, F-O-L-K-E-R-S, at foundrychurch.net. Erica.Folkers at foundrychurch.net. Email her right away. Do not delay on this because if we don't get a response, we are going to have to go ahead and pull the plug because we just don't have the bandwidth to do it ourselves. But we know that maybe with the, the efforts of many, we could pull this off in a great way. So, Erica.Folkers at foundrychurch.net. That is my last announcement. Aloha, groups. Have a great night. We hope to see you back here next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Remember, that's the old Batman thing. Same bat time, same bat channel.